everyone back to coverage of the majors Augusta National we're looking over the 2014 Augusta National Masters Tournament this is George Honeycutt here with Hugh Roy the third and Hugh we're covering the course and we've already covered the front nine let's go to the back nine here and comes the fun part here comes the fun part Absolutely. here we're gonna start with the famous number 10 and the reason it's famous folks is this is where the shootouts the ties that go into uh, really what turns out to be match play ends up you know they start on number 10 and it's funny because you'll hear the announcers every Sunday Here's where the tournament begins, folks. And it's always referred to as the back nine on Sunday is the tournament itself, which is Augusta. However, I disagree with that. The the entire four days, uh, including the par three contest, are the tournament. I mean, you know, as you know, it's, it's history that's well recorded, well discussed, that no winner of the par three event has ever won Augusta. So how many has times ever you see somebody Masters. four or five under par, they'll just chunk it right in the water. Absolutely. <laughs> they'll, throw, they'll, throw, they'll throw two balls into the water and oh, make yeah. an 11 real quick so let's jump to number 10 a camellia this is a downhill dogleg left par four that literally the players today it's 495 yards all of you amateur golfers think about that 500 yard par four however you will see a lot of the pga tour players hitting three woods off of this tee box so they can hopefully gather their ball they can hit their drive into basically about a 10 yard diameter area that's down the left middle part of this fairway it's called the chute and what happens if your ball lands in this shoot area on this fairway, yes. you literally pick up 30 to 40 yards of roll. You will see 340-yard three woods coming off of this tee box. Because, I mean, you've got to hit a 20 to 25-yard hook to catch that slot and like you know or in Bubba's case a fade where yes. the two times during uh, two years ago when he won the event he pulled he hit it straight both of his tee shots he was set up for the fade yeah. however he hit them both straight down into the wooded areas that was only 115 to 140 yards away from the you know, green and then you got Rory who hits it behind the cabins well, you know, he dug hooks it, hits it behind another, that cabin, is trying to hook it. So, therefore, that's why they hit three woods. You've got more loft and you've got more room for air. And both of those are histories of Camellia, number yes. 10. So, again, your downhill par four dogleg left. There are some there are some massive bunkers that you will see uh, short of the green. These do not folks come into play they're for there for aesthetic purposes they're there for the members and however the one bunker that is front right that that bunker does come into play for those that try to draw it in with their approach shots the green is in Augusta National terms relatively flat However, it does, from middle to front, it does slope front, and then there is a back left slope uh, off the back left quadrant. Yes. But it's not as severely undulated as many, many of the other greens here at Augusta. However, a par at number 10 is always a good thing to walk away with. If you make birdie, then you've picked up a sizable number of strokes on the field. So moving from number 10, the par 4, we're now going to number 11. We're literally taking our driver, and we're moving up the hill into the woods uh, to, to hit our tee ball out of what is deemed to be the chute. Again, you are coming out of a tree lined, uh, has to be Hugh, maybe 40 yards wide, maybe a little bit wider, but it just seems like it's extremely tight off this tee box, down a fairway that literally slopes from right to left away from you and then uh, Augusta a few years ago put in upwards of 25 trees down the right hand side uh, pine trees yes. that were uh, anywhere from five years old to ten years old to give them some size and you know they put it in to kind of stop those big hitters from just standing back there and I say big hitters at the time it was Tiger yeah. that would hit the fade and catch that slope over the the fairway at about 200 yards out and then pick up a massive amount of roll so they move the rough over from the right further into the fairway so you actually if you're standing on the tee box looking down number 11 which is white dogwood again 
a healthy 505 yard par four, but this one, folks, actually plays to it. In other words, you're hitting your tee ball to an elevated fairway, and then from there, you're going to be seeing the players hit anywhere from six to seven irons uh, for the big, big, big hitters, and depending on the wind, all the way down to two irons, and you'll see hybrids, and you may even see, depending on if there's a frontal wind, you may even see some fairway metals. Absolutely, and this is a hole, you know, that they lengthened Georgia few years ago and then when they added the trees you know the, the problem with adding the trees it did help the hole as far as play for the tournament but it did take away from the spectators because they could get next to the fairway there but by adding the length to the hole they didn't make it play any harder this thing was hard even at 475 yards the way it was so i mean it, this hitting this green is just ridiculous. well in, in the intelligence and in response to your comment there the trees that were added were added only to the that distance where the quote unquote technology was allowing the ball to reach its apex of yes. flight mm -hmm. so the trees are actually cut off into a proposed yardage of landing area of about 285 to 290 and then the spectators can actually then move in past the trees and get a little bit closer to the fairway to see their second shots yes. uh, however folks on the white dogwood hole number 11 you know the drive we've talked about the drive now for a complete minute but the real hard shot here is your second Second shot is your approach, and you have a little pond that is running from front left. It actually extends out from the green about 20 25 yards and then runs the entire length of the green left. Of course, behind it is Ray's Creek, and then you have a bunker back right of the green, and then you have a frontal slope area with some mounding and just, of course, grass surface on front right. And you'll see a lot of players bailing out front right. Front right. And, you know, I can say this honestly. I was standing there across behind, not really behind him because of the length of where they stopped the ropes. But my good friend Larry Mize and I watched him chip in to win to beat Greg Norman. Know, Greg Norman. And, you know, it's you'll see more people over there hitting that chip shot and stuff during the practice rounds and during the tournament because that's where they bail. Because well, if the ball hits in the center, the left center of the green, it can run in that water. As hurry. you hear and listen and watch the cover during the Masters, if you hear the commentator say he's on the green, he may have a, anybody may have a 60-foot putt, but just being on that green surface in two is a good shot. It's an accomplishment. That's right. So now let's let's just take a few steps over. We're going to climb a little eight-foot hill, and we're going to go over to number 12, the Golden Bell, the famous hole at Augusta. Of course, this starts Amen Corner. Uh, you're looking at uh, 11, 12, and 13 as Amen Corner, but this is really the meat of the corner. And a co a Golden Bell is only going to play from 155, and it'll play down to even 140. But it's a par three that, of course, is famous for going over Ray's Creek and then of course you go across the Hogan Bridge and to reach the greenside surface and this is the most remote area this and number 13 tee box where the players are away from the spectators and so you and great over the last several years of coverage they've mic'd up this area so you're able to cameras yeah you're able to see cameras you're, you've got cameras but you also got microphones over there so you you know you're able to get an audible sense of what they're talking about what they're thinking what they're discussing with their caddies on how to play the mini approach shots or the recovery shots or their seconds on this par three if they miss this green. And it shows, you know, just how close Augusta Country Club is to Augusta National because these two holes between 12 green and 13 tee back right up to the property and the fence line of Augusta Country Club. So there is no room to put in. And a few years there. ago, Augusta National actually purchased some acreage from Augusta Country Club to extend to move back. No Number thirteen tee yes, box. Yes, they did. So uh, they they bought the land, and which was costly. I might. Oh, add. I can promise you. <laughs> and so, uh, but again, number twelve, the par three. Uh, the green is sits horizontal to the tee box, folks. So it's not that deep in in relation to the other greens on at Augusta National. However, the pin placement dictates which club you use. The pin placement dictates whether you go at the pin or whether you fire for the middle part of the green. And then likewise, there is a front bunker that protects the entire front middle. If you come up short, you pray, pray, pray that you're in that bunker. Yes, because if it hits grass, other than Fred Couples a few years ago, other it's than coming back in the water. Fred still remains, I think, the only player that hits short into that front mound area, into the front 
cropped cut grass area yes. and stayed above the water line. Absolutely. So and the thing is about this green, this is so protected by the trees back there that it backs up to. You, you watch players on the tee box and them and their caddies, they're so baffled trying to figure out what the wind's doing. And in between that front bunker and the back of that green, it's not 15 feet. I mean, so there's nowhere to hit it to there. So that's what makes it so difficult there. And for our listeners, we want to reiterate the players that come down Sunday afternoon, their nerves will start to show on the second shot on 11, and then their nerves will even be hyped up as they step on to the green at number 12, or they step up to the tee box at number 12. Yes. This, their hands are going to start shaking at the second shot on 11, and then also on this shot here at number 12. Let's move just up the, uh, up the pine straw and pass some azaleas up to the tee box here on number 13. Number 13, of course, has become a worldly known par 5. It's only 510 yards. However, it is a 90 degrees dogleg left with the fairway that slopes from high right to low left. Race Creek meanders all the way down the left-hand side of the fairway, including and in front of the green surface. Yes. So, however, the players are going to be, you would think that uh, with new technologies today, that these players would just be ripping it past this, this creek area and they can maneuver the ball or whatever. However, folks, when you stand back there on that tee box and you're sitting there going, okay, I got to hit a fade here or I got to hit, I got to hit a hook. I got to hit a hook. And you see so many players that just hit the ball straight. And where do they end up? High right on that fairway in those trees. In the trees. And this is where, George, I'm going to say that, you know, technology has changed the fact of how these guys play this hole because this hole you would think would be easy to stand up there and hit you a little hook around the corner and go but the golf balls don't turn like they used to and because of the drivers and the ball technology you know they tend to go straight so it's harder for these guys to take a driver and turn it around this corner well years gone by i've heard mr nicholas mr palmer mr uh, player years gone by in the 50s and the 60s and even the er some of the early 70s you could literally aim left and shoot it over the trees and cut the corner Oh, yeah, well, they were smaller. They got so that, tall. That's now. right. I remember that's when right. Mark Lai had the lead at Augusta, and he swears to this day he thought he could carry that corner. It didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> you have to you have to work it down the fairway line. Again, a good drive with a little draw on it or a little fade, if you're a left-hander, is going to leave you about anywhere from 190 to about 220 yards away from this green, which everybody's going to go after. I don't care if you're in the fairway or if you're Phil Mickelson up in the trees with a six iron you're going to go after the green surface because it just looks so inviting up there. The green surface is large. However, it's undulated and it is so well protected on the rear by four bunkers that just sit back there and look at you and welcome you to the green surface. Uh, but then often forgot is the Rays Creek that sits right in front of this green surface that collects so many balls during this prestigious and tournament. And that's where I wish they'd have left it like it used to be where it wasn't quite so full and they could kind of get in there and try to play it because they were some pretty comical things that happened with guys trying to play it out of that creek. Oh, I, 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 I agree with you wholeheartedly, but however, it this is not our golf course, nope, nor is nope, it anybody else's, not. so uh, and they it can is, do whatever they want. And it is the second easiest golf hole on this course. It is, scoring-wise, but however, too, again, the nerves Sunday afternoon are coming into play. Yeah. Number 14, Chinese Fur, par 4, 440 yards. This is, again, a tighter driving hole that uh, requires the player to really really hit a good drive and you will see a lot of players trying to get some relaxation back into their arms and their hands mm -hmm. and all that and you'll see some funky drives on this hole. Uh, the pine trees all the way up the right and, hand, and left hand side of this fairway grab a lot of balls. There's a lot of longer limbs uh, Hugh that reach out over the fairway on this hole and so you think you've hit a good shot and then all of a sudden you hear tick yep. and, and you're looking at you know 230 plus to this green. And what makes this hole hard is it's dog legs left but it slopes from left to right so that's why people they overturn it a lot of times you know and then they catch those left trees and you get up in those left trees you've got nothing well the interesting part about this hole is is not the drive folks it's the green surface and what we mean by that is 
uh, if you'll go and look at the coverage, they will show you a camera angle normally from the rear and from the side. However, starting about 15 yards onto the green is a rib that runs from the right-hand side of the collar all the way through the roughly the middle part of the green. And this rib actually creates a shelf and creates a front slope area that literally you could back balls up 20 to 25 to 30 yards, not feet yards. If you hit the wrong approach shot here, you could literally hit the middle part of the green, but find yourself chipping back up onto the green. Well, I'll put it to you this way. The front 25 feet of the green is, is unusual. It's, it's fairway. It's unusual. It's fairway. It's I agree. part of the slope. But I, mean, I didn't say that. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I don't want anybody at Augusta National to claim I'm not referring to it as green. So I agree with you. Again, 14. Really, that's the hole where you, you play that hole on the green. Okay. Oh yeah. It's it's a if the pin's back left, it's very birdie. It's it's a birdie opportunity. If that pin is tucked right on that slope, then you're just hoping for a four and move on. Yeah, but again, you've got that spine that goes in the middle of the green. That if they can catch that, you know, it'll feed there. So it's pretty good. Number fifteen. Thorn. This is a fun, fun hole to watch all four days of the tournament. This this hole has so much history. Uh, of course, being. Uh, just last year, of course, with the Tiger ruling, the HD rule, as it's referred mm -hmm. to, this is where he he literally hits the pin with his approach shot. He ricochets back into the water. He takes, quote-unquote, an inappropriate drop. This was identified by a viewer, calls in, claims the Tiger broke a rule, and you know the story. However, 15 Firethorn has been a turning point for many, many Masters tournaments where... The player that's hottest on that day, and I use like in 1986, Jack Nicholas, he gets on 15 and, and makes an absolute amazing birdie to continue his, you know, oh, yeah, his, his run, his, his run on 15, 16, 17, and then of course with 18, uh, he and then ends up winning the Masters. This so, hole, and this is one of the holes they've really they, they've turned it into a good golf hole by putting the trees down the right, adding pine trees, and making it much tighter. And it's a you've got to hit a perfect tee shot to have the opportunity. And then to go of course, at this and then of course, you still have the taller trees that are on the left hand side of the fairway that kind of crop into the fairway. You can find yourself if you put too much draw on your tee shot if you're a right hander or a fade if you're a left hander. If you put too much movement on the ball and get on the left hand side of the fairway, which folks, the fairway slopes from right to left. So if you get too much over there, then those trees block you out and require you to hit a big draw or a big fade in your approach shot if you're going for the green. Or lay up. Or lay up as Zach Johnson does every year and look at the success Zach has his scoring average on this hole is like 4.24 yeah. so it's ridiculously low and considering he never goes for the green. So maybe that tells us something uh, on the intelligence side. Moving to Number 16, a fun hole to watch. Uh, this is one of the favorite spectator holes on this golf course. And, of course, we're talking about the famous Red Bud. This is the par 3. It plays to about 170 yards. But the famous pond is on the front left and reaches around the, the back middle left side of it. You have a bunker front right. You have a bunker back middle. And then you have a little tiny bunker that's on the back left-hand side of this green. This green green is massive, folks. If you have not been there to see Augusta National, it is massive. And if you're standing on the top, that being the back left of the green, you are literally about five feet above the front, the frontal portion of this green. Yes, that back and right is is raised pretty well. That's right. So you can literally, and the pin is always going to be in Sunday's position, which is going to be basically left hand side, front edge, right behind the bunker, and you're going to see a lot of players going for that pin, coming up short or coming into that bunker, and you're going to see a lot of players bailing out and then having themselves uh, as much as 20 foot left break cut putts uh, that could be 40 to 50 feet long and so thusly you know you you end up getting historical shots or you end up actually losing the tournament on this little 170 yard par three absolutely and a little bit of history heather in my spot we used to go and, and we'd sit left of the pond over there and look at the green that's where the green used to be when this hole was originally built was left of the water that's so right yeah this is 
is there's a lot of history here and a lot of unique stuff. And you know, Mr. Nicholas back in the day, you know, when he would hit the putt up the hill from 35, 40 feet, and he made it for the birdie, and you see him raise the putter. That's where all that comes from. And Tiger, of course, chipping in. You're watching the Nike logo yeah. roll into the hole. Yep. Uh, so there's just tons of history at 16. Moving on to 17, Nadina. Nadina, par four, 440 yards, and. Ladies and gentlemen, this is seems to be a routine par four. Of course, you know, you're talking about Ike's tree and the history and everything that goes along with it. However, this this routine par four, it's all about where you place your ball on the green surface with your approach shot. This hole is another one of those that if you uh, come up short on your approach shot, you literally are chipping 20 to 30 yards back onto the green. If you go over, you're into a bunker hitting back down onto the green surface that is sloping away from you if they have the pin in the back right position you will see a lot of players bail out right and not even try to go for the green surface just to have an uphill chip at that pin so 17 although it seems really docile it seems really easy it seems like a routine par four it is in no way shape or form something that they have to lose their attention span on so they have to pay attention to everything that's going on on number 17 17, and we move into our finishing hole, number 18, the famous, famous par four holly. And boy, have they tightened this thing up from moving that tee back. Well, moving wow. the tee back, and the trees were always there, Hugh, but again, with the tee boxes being a little bit forward, it, it kind of opened up the gap for you. Yes. But now, you've got to hit a very, very precise uh, tee ball off of this. You'll see a lot of players, the longer hitters use three wood, but again, you'll see the, the majority of the field using driver. They will be aiming toward the two left-hand bunkers that are up the left-hand side of the fairway. They'll be looking to carry their ball about 295. If they carry it 310, uh, really 295 to 310, they will be in the bunkers. And uh, Likewise, if they don't put a little movement on the ball, moving it left to right, and if they don't do that, then likewise they could get a bound off the fairway yes. and end up in those bunkers anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, if you end up in those fairway bunkers, you are then looking at roughly a 175-yard shot uphill, which climbs about 30 feet, folks. You just do not realize the elevation change. I have literally slipped and fallen down this hill twice, Hugh, <laughs> just walking down it or walking up it. That's funny. So, again, you get the picturesque view of the clubhouse of Augusta National sitting behind this green surface, number 18, which is a basically a two-tier green sloping from back to front. And on, on the early days, you'll see the pin. Uh, there'll be a pin placement front right. There'll be a pin placement back right. There'll be a pin placement back left. And then, of course, Sunday pin placement will be front left behind that bunker that protects the front left side. This hole does dictate this tournament. You either have to come in and play this thing conservatively by making sure you place a good drive, and then the second shot becomes easy. Uh, they can just hit a standard mid-iron or a standard low iron if you're big hitters like Bubba. Uh, but however, it then boils down to the putt. Every player that plays Augusta, whether first time or 100 years ago, they know this putt. They've seen these putts on mm -hmm. Sunday afternoon. They know how that putt breaks. But it's amazing the be bewilderment that is in their face, the look in their eyes when they seem to miss it by an inch left or an inch right or oh, yeah. whatever. Absolutely. Because that's where the tournament is won and lost is how those hands are shaken. Oh, yeah. So, and that, that brings us to the end of the coverage here of all the 18 holes that is Augusta National. Of course, we've been bringing you up to speed on the 2014 Masters Tournament coming to you very soon at from Augusta National. And in coverage of the majors, again, we'll be bringing you insight into the players, into their uh, approach toward the week that is the Masters. And uh, we'll be also giving you provided live coverage of Augusta here at thegolfdirector.com. So Hugh Royer III, George Honeycutt, thank you so much for joining us on thegolfdirector.com and coverage of the majors.